Carney and Dara Maloney. There are four changes on the Mayo team after their victory over Roscommon. Chris Barrett replaces the injured Tom Caniff at cornerback. Barry Moran returns to the Mayo midfield, while Andy Moran and Alan Dillon are starting in the full forward line. Galway make one late switch. Joss Moore's return from injury will have to wait. He's been ruled out and replaced in the full back line by Angus Tierney. Paul Conroy captains the team at corner forward. McLaughlin got hands on that for Mayo. 1951, the last time they managed four consecutive Connacht titles. Keith Higgins with the familiar four on his back. Now it's Killian O'Connor. They haven't scored so far. Beautiful skill from Killian O'Connor. Got away from his marker so easily. And a precise finish from the 22-year-old to open Mayo's account in the sixth minute. Lovely point. Paul Varley trying to get there but McLaughlin has kept it in play Alan Dillon is screaming for it again McLaughlin taking it and getting away from challenges backing himself and that is a very fine point from Kevin McLaughlin the Galway cover just couldn't get tight enough to him and he hopped off one challenge then the next and then applied this finish Shane Walsh Michal Lundy little bit of space in front of him Higgins coming back strongly Lundy turns back Two Mayo men around him, brilliant from Lundy, and goes with the fist, and that has gone over, and Galway badly needed that. Yeah, beautiful score, must be said by Lundy. He had the conviction and the accuracy with the fist to pass, but Galway badly needed that, as you said, Dara. Andy Moran for Killian O'Connor. He has Donal O'Neill in tow. Who's back on the 20-metre line? Does he need anybody? They're all queuing up. Keegan goal! Lee Keegan with the goal for Mayo. That was easy. 1-6 to two points, and Galway are in serious bother. Very much serious bother, but that was so composed and so coherent. Everything about that attack. Killing O'Connor, beautiful vision, sense of timing, and the run from Keegan on the blind side just made certain of the goal. The scoreline now reflects the dominance they have enjoyed. Here's Danny Cummins. How was his confidence at the minute? Paul Conroy. Conroy, they need a score, Galway, badly. And there it is. Their persistence paid off. Good possession, decent score, and Alan Mulholland wants them to get forward and do more of this. Danny Cummins. Cummins to finish the half on a high, and he's done that. And in fairness to him, he's had a couple of bad wides. That's his first point, but he's kept plugging away, and it's Galway's fifth. And that should be the last action of the opening 35 minutes. Second half underway. Mayo in charge as it stands, leading by 1-9 to five points, but a mistake in the middle of the field. And here comes Shane Walsh for Galway. Can go left or right. Oh, brilliant! But he was denied by the crossbar. Had Paul Conroy to his right, and he's put it over and puts his head in his hands. He's got a point out of it. Most unlucky with a wonderful drive off the crossbar, pick up the crumbs, put it over the bar. That's a good start for Galway. Here's Paul Varley, good hands from Cummins. Now Paul Conroy. Jerk Cafferty is the Mayo fullback. Conroy trying to wriggle away from Cafferty, and he's done just that. Conroy for Galway. Yeah. Over for a point. Well, this is a very, very bright start for Alan Mulholland's team. It's a second point for the Galway captain. The gap is narrowing. Gareth Bradshaw into Mayo territory. Bradshaw has Eddie Hoare ahead of him, and Bradshaw backs himself, the wind helping. And it's four points in a row. Three of them have come in the second half, and Gareth Bradshaw with a stunner. Certainly, they have had three very influential points now at the start of the second half. Barrett. Great feet from Chris Barrett. Now it's Jason Doherty for Mayo. Here they come. Doherty slots it over. Calm as you like. Stems the maroon tie. Andy Moran. Kevin McLaughlin. Mayo men getting free. And look who's free. Lee Keegan. Goal chance for Keegan. How many times have we seen players hit parts of the woodwork here? It's gone over for a point for Lee Keegan. But that should have been goal number two.
Seamus O'Shea in towards Jason Doherty. Will this be the goal? What a superb finish from Jason Doherty. Calm as you like. Well, that is all the marks of the assassin about it. Great uh, you know, anticipation by Jason Doherty to pick up the breaking ball. That's a great reward for a fine effort from Doherty throughout this match. Wonderfully taken goal. Massive amount of movement ahead. Players darting into position to get the ball. One of them is Killian O'Connor. Great hands. They're in again. Keegan may get his goal. And it's into the back of the net by Barry Moran. Galway cut to ribbons again. Exceptional point uh, play that time by Moore and composure and vision and unselfishness that caps a great comeback from Barry Moore. But fair play to Keegan, just lays it on the plate for him. Sean Armstrong, that's Chris Barrett there with it. Galway after a goal, Paul Conroy, Barry Moore and behind him. Penalty is going to be the decision, I think. Is it a Galway penalty? Yes, it is. I thought contact was done outside the large rectangle, but um, are we going to have a black card the first of the afternoon here? Yeah, it is for Barry Moran. Robbie Henley, a big man to try and get the ball past. Shane Walsh for Galway. Henley saves it. That is an exceptional save. An exceptional save by any standards. He gets down to that, gets a hand to it. That's a very, very good save. It's Galway's Dotty Burke now. Sean Armstrong with Chris Barrett. Armstrong has it hung on. I think it has, you know. Yes, it has. Second for Sean Armstrong. And this could be the last action of the Connacht final. They're bringing Mikey Sweeney in. Shea, actually. And there is the full-time whistle, and Mayo have equal defeat of those great teams who managed four in a row. The run ended in 1951, and they, under James Horan, have done their own four in a row. A little piece of history for Mayo. For the Mayo captain, well, Andy, Andy Horan is up there already. But it is a huge achievement. The Nestor Cup stays in Mayo for the fourth successive year. They're Connacht champions again. We're delighted and immensely proud of, um, of that achievement. You know, four, four Connacht titles um, in a row, haven't beaten every team. Um, over the last four years is, 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 is a great achievement and uh, we're very proud of it. And, um, you know, I suppose what it does give us is now it gives us a chance to play in a quarter final. And, um, so we'll enjoy it today, absolutely no doubt, and we'll, we, you know, we'll, we'll enjoy tonight, and um, we'll just look forward to the to the next game, which is which is a great place to be. Chances that we'd normally convert, we, we didn't convert today, and against the top teams, that's going to kill you. So, um, you know, that, that that was a factor in the game that we didn't put away against against Mayo. We were going to have to take everything we got, uh, every chance we got, and, and we didn't today. So that was the the gap between the teams today. But look, we're looking at it. I think it was 17 scores to 16, so we weren't that far away. Is that a fair summing up from Alan Mulholland, Pat? Yeah, you know, in, in fairness to them, it was a much better performance than they gave last year against Mayo. They were hammered by 17 points. This year, 7 points. Far more spirited performance. And, you know, they kicked 12 wides, had two goal-scoring chances and missed a penalty. So it could have been closer. But to be perfectly honest, Des, I thought this was a game that never, the result was never in doubt. I think the more experienced Mayo team, the case of the old dog for the long road, they always had this game under control. They won the centre field battle, dominated the middle third of the field physically much stronger than you know yeah. it's an impressive record it's their 11th successive victory in Connacht championship football it's their fourth Connacht title in a row the last time they achieved that was 1951 and what what happened after that they went on and won the all Ireland. Uh, as i look at and the what teams happened <laughs> what happened after that i have it's been a bleak <laughs> but what i can uh, see is that you know mayo haven't gone away mentally they've, they've sure. recovered so it's dublin kerry mayo they're the top three teams okay. i see at the moment Kieran, you were in tactically we're going to talk about now, and you were impressed with how Mayo used Aidan O'Shea, for instance. Yeah, I just thought it was a shrewd call, and he, he ended up being the top possession man of the middle eight, 21 possessions. Uh, they picked him at centre forward, Des, and they targeted him on their own kick out to see him go up here, and he just bat bats down a ball. And uh, they went down uh, that right hand side a lot in the first half. Uh, here we can see again, he's, he's up there, he breaks it down I think, to J Jason Doherty. Uh, very simple, effective tactic, and mm -hmm. then he ran short. So, 
what it done was it took him out of the equation of having to mark the two big goalie midfielders and going toe to toe with them and end up coming out maybe 50 50. It let him on the goalie kickouts sweep in under the breaking ball. Uh, at which he was very effective. It gave him the freedom to move out of that centre forward position. Uh, we can see him here again. He's just coming in to pick up the break, and, and he picked up an incredible amount of ball yeah. uh, and put Mayo on the front foot in that first half. Uh, and as I said, he was the top possession man. So I, I think it was a shrewd move from um, James Horan to be able to put him there and have faith in Barry Moran and bring him in at midfield. But as Pat said, I think it, it was a case of men against boys. Galway did improve. But these two teams are just at a different stage of their development and may are still three or four steps ahead of them. And the Galway setup in trying to counter counteract that. Yeah, well, got, got, they obviously lost by 17 points last year, so they had to come in with some sort of a plan. And, and I feel they came in to try and keep the game tight in the first in the first uh, 10, 15 minutes. You can see here the six men around Jason Doherty. They have another four or five, they have 11 men behind the ball. And, and they've done this a, a good bit in, in, in the first half. But I, I suppose the whole tactic uh, around playing this sort of system is that when you get the ball and you move out of defence, uh, they were probably looking for quick ball into Conroy and Danny Cummins. Uh, Mayo, as I said, are well organised, well drilled, and their, their, their defenders are very good at supporting their, 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 their full back line. And we can see here when they did kick, they kicked a lot of long direct ball in. Here's Keith Higgins coming in back just to sweep up, support the full back line, out they come. Mm -hmm. uh, another case here, Colin Boyle, again, is just drifting back, looking for that breaking ball, and he comes, comes into the picture here and, and, and picks it up. Um, right throughout the game, that long ball did not work for Galway. Uh, when they ran at the Mayo defence, uh, as Pat will probably show later, they, they, they caused them a lot of problems. But that direct ball meant Mayo were too experienced, too organised, um, and uh, you know, defensively were on top, and they got very little return out of it. So, uh, as I said, it was a brave Galway performance. You couldn't fault them, you couldn't fault them for effort, but I just, as I said, they're a few stages behind in their right. development. And Pat, when it is, they're tightly marked in attack, the Mayo defenders are so strong coming forward. You've picked out Lee Keegan as an example. Well, I've picked out Lee Keegan because I think I think he's the best wing back in the modern game, and he epitomises all that modern day wing backs should be about. Should be about doing proper defensive duty for a start. And just watch this. This is classic defensive play. Go inside of his man, standing tall, showing his opponent out out to the wing, away from the goal, getting a hand in on the ball, keeping pressure, not rushing in, and forcing the Galway player to into mm. turnover. His link-up play is amazing. Uh, his, his stamina, amazing. We're just highlighting here, 50 metres out from goal, that's where he is there. The ball goes into the corner to Killian O'Connor. Roll on another bit. Now you have three Galway defenders, and who's just behind them but Lee Keegan. But look at the determination. Look at the pace that he shows in running into that position. And that's a fabulous finish. That's, that's the finish of a class forward. And just, this is his work rate all through the game. He, not an only defender, but look at the way he slips up. Now we saw him earlier on at the edge of his own square. Here he is at the edge of, of the Galway square, scoring a point. Last year he scored in every round of the championship, including the all Ireland final. He's what modern-day yeah. wing-back play is all about. Superb player. Okay. Now you're clearly impressed by Mayo and their win today. You have them in the top three. Any concerns you'd have for them going forward? Well, I've just highlighted a package where it's, it's highlighting Galway's wides, but at the same time it's highlighting deficiencies in Mayo's attack. Danny Cummins, one-on-one. -on -one, turns his man, watch it, look at the amount of space that's there. Now, a good forward, a quality forward should be scoring that. That's a bad miss by Danny Cummins. Now, watch this piece where Paul Conroy, three Mayo players, we've just shown them here, go to the ball, three Mayo players, mm. and leave Gareth Bradshaw in. And again, in this instance, it's a Galway miss chance where it should be punched over the bar. Gareth Bradshaw hits it off the post. Now, just after halftime, this is where, as Kieran alluded earlier on, I think Mayo are vulnerable. When you run at this Mayo defence, they're bad on the back foot, and I think they're bad on defending. This is Shane Walsh going through. Look at the space in front of him. But what's even more worrying is the way the Mayo defenders are backing back, and there's no hand laid on them. And the last piece there is Paul Conroy getting a ball. And I'm just highlighting this because, again, it's the ease with which he gets past. It's the ease with which he gets past Jörg Cafferty, number one. Look, and there's a two other mayor defenders. There's no hand laid on him. He's Now the space opens up and probably should have got a goal. So I worry, bad misses by Galway, but I worry about that. The con allowing that much space. in the. But I worry when you run at mayor defenders, I think they're vulnerable. They're good. Go